Hey everybody, we're here today at Hard Racing. We're going to be doing the Grom Project Bike. And today we're going to be installing the Scott Steering Damper. And as you can see here, this thing is quite a piece of art. The aluminum on it is just top quality machined. All the hardware is included, your wrenches, your blue Loctite. There's your damper. Have your high speed and your low speed controls settings. And on the side you have your swept control. Man, this kit's really, really nice with the obviously as you can see the amazing machined aluminum. But it also has a two or actually three piece frame bracket is going to make install a lot easier than some of the other kits out there. Scott says you basically don't have to remove much of the bodywork to put this thing on because the way the design is on the clamp it goes right in front of your steering stem. You loosen those bolts down, you put on the side plates first and then you bolt these top one back on. And what that's going to allow you to do is not have to You'll see when we're installing it. Not have to remove as much bodywork and tank and all that stuff to get that down around the frame versus a traditional U clamp. If it's one piece, it'd be a lot harder to install. And here we go. So, the first step to installing the Scott Stamper is to remove your stock bars or aftermarket bars and your bar clamp. So now that we've got our bars removed, we're going to take the stock rubber bushings and mount them onto the Scott's bar mount. Okay, so before we mount this to the bike, one thing we wanted to point out is Scott's does give the ability to change your bar position. Look at the instructions. They have all that information. We are actually going to leave it in the stock bar position, but for those of you that do want to change it, Scott's does give you several options to choose from. So just check your instructions out to, for more details. So next we're going to bolt the mount kit up to the bike. Okay, so now you're going to take the stock rubber grommet, washer, and nut, and you're going to mount those on the bottom and bolt that down. Okay, the next step we want to do is take our frame bracket and take all four of these screws out, put Loctite on them, put them back in, okay once you've done that you actually want to go back and turn it about a half a turn to a full turn. Loosen them because you want to have this frame bracket sloppy when you do the install. Just like so. All right, so now that you've got your loosened frame bracket, you actually want to drop it down into position, line them up with the holes, 
And then you're going to take these two long bolts that come with your kit. Okay, and with these two long bolts, as you can see, they are different diameters. The thicker bolt is going to go into the upper hole, and the thinner one is going to go into the lower hole. And as you can see, you want to go ahead and put on the washers first before you put the bolts in. So now that we've got our upper and our lower bolts pushed through, next what we're going to do is take the two washers and the two nuts, go to the other side, put those on, and tighten those down. And since these are using nylocks, you do not need to use blue lo Loctite on these bolts. Okay, so now that we have tightened the two lower bolts, now what we need to do with the supplied wrench is to tighten the four top bolts. Okay, so now that you've gotten your frame bracket tightened, the next step is to take your tower pin and drop it in. But before you do that, you need to take grease and grease up the tower pin. And you only need to put a little bit on it, don't have to go crazy with the grease, and then you just drop it in, just like so. So our next step is to install the damper. So if you turn it over, what you'll notice is on the link arm, this hole that's machined out, that's actually when you go to install this onto the tower pin, the tower pin is machined in the same shape. You need to line those up just like so, so when you put the damper on the link, I mean the tower pin slides right into the link arm. And you'll know you've got it installed correctly because if you look underneath, the tower pin is actually right through that machined hole on the link arm. Okay, so the next step is to bolt down the damper to the mount. And as you'll notice, we have put the blue Loctite on these bolts as well. So make sure you do that. Very, very important. And our last step is to take the four bolts that Scott supplies and we're going to mount the top of the bar clamp. And make sure, very, very important, Loctite these as well. Okay, so now that we've tightened these top four bolts, 
you want to go over and make sure that everything is tightened up. Make sure you didn't miss a bolt and next thing you want to do is to make sure there's also nothing binding um, when you go lock to lock. Alright, so to wrap it up, basically, you now would go out and test drive it, see how it feels, and we highly recommend before you make any changes on the settings to leave it the way it came from Scott's, which they put it at uh, the settings that most people are going to like. It's not like it's at some zero or anything like that. They put it right in the middle of all their settings, and go out and try it. See how you like it, and if you are going to make changes... Make them small changes, a little bit at a time, and only use one circuit at a time. The last thing you want to do is just go through the whole damper and just change everything all at once. And then be like, oh, wow, that totally doesn't feel right. So just do small changes at a time. Each time you go out, try it, feel it, and then if you want to change a little bit more. Most 99% of the time, you're not going to change the high speed at all. You're probably just going to leave it. You'll do a little bit of adjustments on the low speed. And then if you want to do the swept controls on each side to have it disengage a little bit towards the end. Some guys prefer that too. Sorry for the squeaking sound. That's our race stand. It is not the damper. And so the last thing was uh, the overall review of it. I mean, this took us start to finish probably about 12, 15 minutes. I mean, really, the majority of the time is taking your stock bars or your aftermarket bars off, unbolting them, and then everything else. Once that's done, bolting the damper back on, and uh, the mount is probably about eight minutes. So it's a uh, pretty simple, straightforward, easy to do. Uh, just regular tools from your toolbox, as you saw. Nothing fancy. Um, we did take the sides off. Well, actually, we already had the sides off. Um, you probably actually can do it even without taking those off, but it, it does help to take them off to get a little bit better access underneath the triple tree because normally the shrouds are sticking out right here. So those are optional. If you want to try it without taking them off, it probably wouldn't be a problem either. So, And again, this is a sub-mount kit. This is made for oversized bars only. Um, they do have adapters. You could put your stock bars on as well. The kit that we are installing though today is a uh, oversized sub-mount. And then they also have a top mount for stock bars only. So check out our website uh, if you have any more questions, and we'll get you taken care of.